Good afternoon, welcome. Today is the 10th day of March, a sunny day with climbing temperatures after an evening of freezing rain and snow. I heard a caller to CBC Radio this morning noting the icy road conditions on the 100 series highways, and at the time of their calling in around 8 a.m., they had counted 19 cars off the road. We are, however, heading toward double-digit positive temperatures in the coming days, a hint of spring. A reminder of our weekly offerings in person and online, Sundays at 8.30 and 10 a.m. in person, along with 7.30 a.m. Wednesday and noon on Fridays, and an in-person meditation group that meets noon on Wednesdays. Online, you can join us Monday evenings at 6.30 for a prayer workshop, Pray As You Can, Not As You Can't. It examines the history and practice of prayer as well as engaging in prayer. An online meditation group meets Thursdays at 6.30. For both of those groups, you can get the Zoom details by sending an email to prayasyoucan3 at gmail.com. We also host a Zoom Sunday School Saturdays at 4. Send an email to cathedralchurch at eastlink.ca for details. This Saturday, there will be no Sunday school as we're taking a March break. And last, but certainly not least, every morning, Monday through Saturday, a dedicated group provide morning prayer online on the Cathedral's YouTube channel and on Facebook. A reminder of the Great Butterfly Challenge. We're hoping to decorate the Cathedral with butterflies for Easter Sunday. You can find templates and video how-tos on the Cathedral's website under the Information tab. Tomorrow will mark the anniversary of the World Health Organization declaring COVID-19 as a world pandemic. Four days later, this province announced widespread lockdown measures, our churches closed, and we have been in a constant state of emergency since then. In Canada, COVID has claimed to date 22,304 lives and globally over 2.61 million. While certainly hope is on the horizon with the advancements in vaccines and their delivery, we're not out of the woods yet and all are to be commended for the ongoing vigilance and adherence to safety protocols in this long journey we have made together. My original poem that I had selected for today was one by the 17th century English poet, John Milton, who is perhaps best known for his writing of the epic poem, Paradise Lost. And I was going to share his much shorter poem titled, When I Consider How My Light Is Spent, which reflects upon his losing his eyesight in the prime of his life and the things we take for granted until we are faced with loss. So do look that one up if you like. But I came upon another poem that just seemed to speak to me where I am in the moment and is another example of the power of poetry to transport us with a brevity of words to new insights and perspectives. So the poem I've chosen in place of John Milton is one by James Baldwin, which has as its title, Untitled. James Baldwin, reading from his biography on poetry.org, was born in Harlem, August 2, 1924, raised by his mother, Emma Burtis Jones, and his stepfather, David Baldwin. As a teenager, he worked as a preacher in a small revivalist church while attending DeWitt Clinton High School in the Bronx. After high school, Baldwin moved to Greenwich Village in New York, the epicenter of the city's countercultural movement and began writing seriously, publishing essays and reviews in The Nation and other publications. In 1948, he moved to Paris. Baldwin was perhaps best known for his prose, written during the 1950s and 60s, becoming a major voice in the civil rights movement. In 1953, he published his first novel, Go Tell It on the Mountain. He went on to publish six other novels, as well as several plays and collections, including Notes of a Native Son. James Baldwin also published one full-length poetry collection titled Jimmy's Blues. 
Of his work, the great Maya Angelou once wrote, quote, James Baldwin was born for truth. It called upon him to tell it on the mountains, to preach it in Harlem, to sing it on the left bank in Paris. His honesty and courage would lead him to see truth and to write truth in poetry, drama, fiction, and essay. He was a giant, unquote. Baldwin died in southern France, December 1st, 1987. So as we reflect upon this year that we have lived through as a global community and as people of faith, listen to these words. Lord, when you send the rain, think about it, please, a little. Do not get carried away by the sound of falling water, the marvelous light on the falling water. I am beneath that water. It falls with great force, and the light blinds me to the light. James Baldwin, the poem untitled. As for a song, we have been asked in preparation for an upcoming clergy retreat, which will be held online, to share what music has been helpful to us over the months of this pandemic. One that came to mind immediately, and again as we pause to recognize the cost and sacrifices of this year, one that speaks to me is an instrumental orchestral piece written by the Italian composer Agno Morricone, titled Gabriel's Oboe. It was used as the theme song for a movie released in 1986 called The Mission, which starred Robert De Niro, Jeremy Irons, and Liam Neeson. Gabriel is the name of the missionary Jesuit priest who hopes to befriend the native population through his music. The soundtrack for the film was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Score and earned Morakani the Golden Globe Award for Best Original Score. There are many versions of this that you can find online, including several with Morakani as the conductor. You'll find the full score under Morakani Conducts Morakani. Gabriel's Oboe. But my favorite is a condensed version, one which features Maya Lagoska as the soloist on the oboe. Back at the outset of the pandemic, when we held our services in St. Stephen's Chapel, I often used this piece as service music through my choir in a box. It is hauntingly beautiful and I hope it will carry you away on its wings. Gabriel's oboe, Agno Morricani. And in closing, here is a contemporary prayer offered by the Reverend Lalania Raja Anna of Madagascar for the World Council of Churches. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank you for your unconditional love for this, we can always seek your mercifulness. You see our distress. You hear our moans. You feel our fear. Strengthen our faith in these moments of uncertainty. Strengthen our faith in these moments of struggle. Struggles against fear, disappointment, anxiety, and worries. O oh Lord, fill our heart with your love. Protect our mind with your word. Guide our soul with your spirit. Let your strength work in our weakness. You can use these struggles for our good. O Lord of love, you are able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to your power that is at work within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep in touch, stay safe, keep the faith until we meet again.